I'm Cindy O'Laughlin. I'm from Shelbina. My husband, Russell, and I own Leo O'Laughlin Incorporated. We have four locations now, Shelbina, Macon, Marceline, and we've ex- just expanded into Lewis County to LaBelle. So we've owned the business for over 25 years. The business itself is over 70 years old. So, um, you know, mostly our customers are agricultural. We haul a lot of aggregate and we produce a lot of ready mix concrete. And we also have a trucking side where we um, help supply paving contractors, road work, that kind of thing. I'm looking to be elected to Brian Munslinger's seat, Senate 18. He is termed out. So it covers 14 counties of Northeast Missouri, largely rural. Some of our bigger communities are Kirksville, Hannibal, Moberly, but largely it's a rural type of community that you would be serving. And since I've been in business and a business owner for virtually all of my life, I feel that that uh, experience would translate well into the legislature. I think that we understand how to budget money. We understand how to set priorities. We understand how to respond to unforeseen circumstances, which you have all the time. And we know to not spend money that we don't have. And I think you have a different perspective if you have to earn money before you spend it. So I would like to see us maybe return to some of the priorities that we have in our area. One, primarily agriculture is is a primary economic driver for our area. And Senator Munslinger was very good on that topic. He was a leader in that area. But we also have our small rural communities, and I think that we need to find a way for them to remain economically viable. I have spent the last year traveling around Northeast Missouri and stopping in businesses and talking to people, trying to hear their story and determine how they got where they're at now, some of the challenges that they face, and I've learned a lot from them. You think that you know how other people's lives are going and the things that are are maybe obstacles for them, but until you talk to them and until you listen to them, you really don't know. So I have three areas that I talk about primarily and try to seek input from people on. The first would be, I would like to see us return control of our schools, our public schools, to the local school board and return control of the classroom to the teachers. I think we've allowed the federal government to intervene in our schools a little too much. And it has created some issues for the teachers and the school board. So I'd like to see that reversed. Secondly, I'd like to see us work on um, skilled trades development, workforce development. In a largely rural area, well, really throughout the state, we have a real lack of people to fill skilled trades positions. So we took what used to be called industrial arts out of high schools And we sort of funneled everyone to a four-year degree. And so people pretty much that they know ahead of time, that's what they're going to do. But there are a lot of people who like to work with their hands. And you can really make a lucrative living doing that, not have to attend a four-year school, not to not have to amass a large debt. And I think that I would like to see that promoted a lot more. And I think it, it works well in our area. Third... I would like to see us focus a little bit on entitlement reform. In some ways, we are paying people more to stay home than they can make in an entry-level position. So the way that the system is set up now, if you are receiving any kind of entitlements and you're working, they have what's called the cliff effect. So if you make a dollar over an arbitrary line then they take the whole thing away from you. And when you do that, then people say, well, I can't afford to work. And so then they just quit the job and stay home. Well, we're not encouraging them in that way. We're not encouraging them to be an independent working individual. And I think that we should, because I think that's what people really are made to do. 
there are some who would not be able to work. But for those who can, I think we need to set up a system of assistance that is slowly but surely sort of reduced as they make their way up the ladder up and out of a state of total dependence to a state of total independence. And we don't have that now. So when you look at the other people who are running for this position, all of whom I have supported at various times in the past, and they're all nice people, but they've been there for a combined total of 26 years. And when you listen to them or you talk with them, and you try to see what their priorities are, they don't seem to be in touch with what's actually happening in the area. So I think it's time for a new perspective, and I think I can bring that to the table. I'd like to say I hope that I can earn their support. I try to get around to every place, and in 14 counties it's kind of a, it's kind of a task. But um, I've really enjoyed the people I've met. I've really enjoyed hearing the stories that they have to tell. And I think that... I would be a personal senator who understands their way of life and who wants to do something that really makes an impact in their life. So I hope that I can gain their support on August the 7th.